This is my Ratrig Vcor 4 500, currently the largest 3D printer in my studio. Basically, since the moment I started building this on my second channel, Mandic Labs, where we streamed the build process, folks have been asking for a review of the Vcor 4. Problem is, I don't do reviews anymore. These are my LED power conduit lights that I built on my channel a couple of videos ago, but I never got around to putting a diffuser over the LED housing. I've come up with a compromise. There's a distinct lack of reviews about this machine out there, so I can understand why folks want to see something. I need to work on this power conduit diffuser project. I've got a day to do it, so I might as well break out my biggest printer. And I'm going to give you some thoughts about this machine after a limited amount of time using it. Quick disclosure for you, Ratrig did provide this machine to me free of charge so I could use it in projects, see how I feel about it and such. That said, I also started building it about a year ago and with that, some things might have been updated since then. I don't know. I only know what I have in front of me. So check out their store, their Discord, their Facebook group for the latest information and see what you're going to get if you were to pick up one of these kits today. We're going to be all over the place and probably chaotic, so timestamps are in the description. First things first, I got to put this thing back together because I haven't used it since moving to the new studio. I've been relying on my print farm from studio sponsor Persia Research. Their core ones meet my day-to-day -day printing needs beautifully. And of course, I can always contact studio sponsor PCBWay for their excellent 3D printing, CNC machining, and PCB services to get my projects complete. But if I want to print big stuff, well, then I need the rat rig back up and running. I took the bed out of it during transit to the new studio because it's it's just big, eight millimeters thick, 530 by 530. It's heavy and I was worried it would damage something bouncing down the road. A quick note I do need to make is that my bed heater was non-functional when I got it. This Kinovo 1200 watt bed heater, most would consider a high quality unit, and it does work beautifully, but the thermal fuse I had to bypass. It was bad right out of the box. Don't know if it got damaged in transit or what, but I had to put an external thermal fuse on it for safety. Wasn't a big deal, I keep those fuses in stock, but that was an issue if it popped up. Just for comparison's sake, here's the Prusa XL build plate, and here's the Prusa Core 1 build plate on the rat rig bed. If you need a machine this big, well, you need a machine this big, and you probably know it. The bed on the machine installs quite easily. Clips into some palm clips that allow for expansion and contraction, as well as adjustment of the Z axis. That said, I remixed the rear leg on this so I could mount some Wagos and PCBs to it because they want you in the instructions to run the wiring for the bed right into the electronics box, which there's no disconnect. You, it would have to be opened up and unwired to remove the bed. My setup allows me to easily install and remove it without having to mess with all the wiring into the electronics box. Another wiring note, the power inlet for this machine has no switch. You plug it in, the machine turns on. This is because a lot of switched IEC connectors are only rated to 10 amps and the bed alone on this machine can pull over that. So for 110 volt market, they just don't do that. There's a lot that I like about this build process and the way that they do things on this machine, but we got to rip off the bandaid and talk about the weakest link. Unfortunately, it's the wiring, which for a lot of folks is going to be a big turnoff. I know that a lot of people are intimidated by wiring in general, and having to crimp JST connectors and power wires, you have to on this machine, and that's that's extra scary to a lot of people. I'd really love to see a plug and play ready to go harness for this. I think that's the missing element of this whole kit. For a lot of folks, that's just what they're comfortable with, having to crimp your own connections and route your own wires as much as you do on this build with good instructions. They were good when I built it and I looked, looks like they've improved since then but the wires are extra long in a lot of cases, like these motor wires that don't have to go such a short distance. It just, it needs that next level of polish, in my opinion. All right, let's make some progress on the diffuser projects. We can get prints rolling. The number one comment on my video about these was that I should have printed the diffusers. So I'm playing around with material choices. White PLA leaves this kind of green cast and cuts down way too much on the light output. I tried transparent PTG from Prusament and it also cut down on light output just more than I wanted it 
to. So I landed on clear PTG from Ambrosia West 3D's filament line. This is just a little more see-through than the transparent PTG, and I can still see hot spots of the LEDs, but I can get good light output. I designed up the 0.9 millimeter thick diffuser that's going to slip into the grooves that I designed into the housings of the LED power conduit wall. I made the diffusers in single pieces for each section and then divided them up by print build volume on various machines. I'm using Core 1s, Mark 4s, the XL, and the rat rig to do this project. And with that, it's time to get printing. I'm on a time crunch, so I put a 0.8mm CHT nozzle in the Betis Rapido UHF hot end this thing has. It pushed 38 millimeters cubic with this PETG, which is not the highest flowing material by any means. And off we go. Let's talk about something positive that I quite like about the rat rig, and that's the frame. It uses 3030 aluminum extrusions that are machined on the ends to get them nice and square, and a unique blind joint design that hard to explain but it basically uses a set screw that goes into the side and pulls the extrusions together it works beautifully and assembling this frame was significantly easier and faster than much smaller machines i've assembled in the past at least as far as squaring things up are concerned the scale of it definitely made it a challenge but being able to get things square was so much easier the machine coming standard with a beacon bed scanner is lovely. It meshes out the 500 millimeter bed faster than a lot of machines do significantly smaller build volumes, though that really does highlight just how noisy the motors can be on this thing. I want to enclose it partly just to dampen the sound of both the motors and the fans. For being such a big machine, this thing can be wicked fast. I have been chasing some pretty nasty weirdness in my input shaper graphs ever since I put this thing together. I don't know if I have a crunchy bearing somewhere. I've disassembled and reassembled the motion system numerous times and never gotten it particularly good. My unit does have the hybrid motion system, so it has these additional motors with belts that work only on the Y axis to help move the gantry faster where usually a machine would be a little slower. I haven't tested it back to back with and without these to really say, but it does seem to help. That said, it provides an additional hurdle when it comes to tuning as you have more variables at play in your motion system. With our pile of parts printed, it's time to get to installing these in the power conduits. These are the parts that are printed on the rat rig. They don't look massive, but they are bigger than would fit on any of my other machines. For comparison, here's a part printed on the XL, here's a part printed on the rat rig. It's just build volume. Doesn't seem like that big of a piece, but this is this wouldn't fit on any of my other machines. Each of our printed pieces is fairly thin, so I can deform them to fit into the channels and they fit into groove receivers in both sides of the conduit housing. From here, it's just filling in the puzzle. The pieces are laid out. I just gotta put them where they go till I get all of my new 3D printed LED diffusers in place. I can still see some hot spots, but I was really focused on getting brightness, getting light still through here. And it's a definite improvement in my opinion anyway. All right, real talk. What's my opinion? actual opinion of the vCore 4 500. The build quality is excellent. The prints, the CNC machine components, the extrusions are especially nice. You can tell Rat Rig is an extrusion company. They made a great product here overall. The wiring is my big sticking point. But other than that, I like the machine. There's also the sheer fact that this thing is just big and heavy. And if you're a home hobbyist or DIYer, or even running a print business out of your home. If you build this in a household room, it's not fitting through the door getting out of there. So you're gonna have to disassemble it to get it out of the room and then rebuild it wherever you wanna put it. I built it in the garage at my last studio and now the warehouse here, being able to get it through a garage door is the way to go. 
I would be remiss if I didn't mention Rat OS. It's Rat Rig's offshoot of Clipper. It just makes the user setup for their machines so much easier. I don't love the way the configs are set up. I find them annoying as somebody who is a Clipper power user. It's just not the way I would want to set things up, but I still find it to be really useful. And it has some features I would love to see in mainline Clipper, like the real-time analyzer for checking your resonance is just awesome. I'm being a bit rambly because I am very lacking in sleep right now. This past week's been very, very busy. I enjoy this machine. I want to find more uses for it. I would love to know what would you use this machine for? What is your use case? for it that you're really interested in this machine. Love to hear it. Let me know in the comments. For now, we got some diffusers on the wall. We got the rat rig discussed, and I'm hoping to use it more in Mandic Labs 2.0. Hope you folks found this video interesting, somewhat informative. Let me know in the comments what you think. Drop it a like if you found it interesting and get subscribed to ensure your 3D prints don't fail. It's not a guarantee, but it can't hurt. All right, folks. See ya.